G'day, if you want to build soil like this, listen up today. In this video, we'll be talking about the best way to build soil organic carbon. This is all part of our soil organic carbon masterclass. Go check it out on our website. It's completely free. There's not even an email opt-in. It's just free information. But today, what we'll be doing is we're going to be summarizing the last three topics in this uh, series of uh, the different pathways for you guys to um, actually use on your farms or your veggie gardens or whatever. And it will be combining each of these pathways because you don't just simply choose one or the other pathway. It's how much of each of these pathways are we using and what are we trying to maximize? So again, the three pathways are the liquid carbon pathway suggested by Dr. Christine Jones. Go check, that, uh, check out that video if you want to learn more about that. But effectively, it has a carbon conversion efficiency. So the carbon that goes into the system gets converted into soil organic carbon of uh, 46%. Now with decomposition, this is where litter or, um, or biomass gets converted into soil organic carbon. And that has a, an efficiency of about 8.3%. And then you have the application of biochar, which has an efficiency of about 41%. And so the aim of the game is to maximize soil organic carbon, but more importantly, build soil health. Because sometimes we can get caught up in this idea of we're just focusing on soil organic carbon. And yes, that's good, but really it's a function of soil health. We can have a, we can have a soil full of soil organic carbon, um, or say biochar, but is it really a functioning and healthy soil? Um, not always. And so the aim of the game is to build a healthy soil, not just a soil full of um, organic matter. And so the only way that soils become healthy is by healthy plants. So the plant has to be healthy itself to improve the soil. And the way this works, and you'll uh, learn more about this in the uh, liquid carbon pathway, is that you get photosynthesis, it captures carbon, um, as, or carbon dioxide and fixes it into sugars and then the sugars get converted into more complicated uh, compounds such as like proteins and fatty acids and then these carbons move basically into the soil profile uh, and it gets fed to mycorrhizal or fungi as well as other uh, microbes and this is really important because it's the mycorrhizal or fungi that actually improve the soil they go into aggregates so they, they bind uh, soil particles together using a sticky compound called glumalin um, and it holds the aggregates together. Now, there's also uh, the microbes around uh, the, the plant root called the rhizo sheath, and that's like the dreadlock type uh, thing you'll see around a lot of plant, uh, plant roots, and that is the plant feeding uh, bacteria, protozoa, fungi, and whatnot. But it's really this conversion of carbon from up here into the soil that builds soil health and increases our soil organic carbon. So how can we do this process more efficiently using these three components? And there's a bit of a framework I like to follow. I learned about this from John Kempf. And basically you wanna kinda of follow this transition uh, or process in any system you have. So the first one is we wanna focus on the decomposition pathway with nutrition to feed, uh, to feed bacteria. So using decomposition, this can be things like uh, a soil primer. So we have a bit of a program at AgriSol where we can uh, we consult with clients on how can we use a soil primer to really stimulate a lot of the soil uh, biology. So that's things like applying maybe fish hydrolysate or molasses as well as humic acid, a bit of the uh, humic substances. So we have that in the blend as well as some potential minerals that we're, we're missing. Anyway, as we apply it to our uh, soil to stimulate specifically bacteria. So we want to stimulate the bacteria because it's the bacteria that then feed the plants in the rhizophagy cycle. So we have a whole video on the rhizophagy cycle. I won't get too much into it here. You can go check out the video, but basically the plant eats the microbes for its food. Basically what happens is the plant takes up uh, bacteria or different microbes, rips off the cell wall and consumes the proteins and all the minerals in that. And so this pathway of plants getting the nitrogen and as well as the other uh, nutrition is a highly efficient pathway which allows the plant to then increase its lipid production. Now lipids are quite important, they're a very high uh, source of uh, energy and the plant can then supply that to fungi, more specifically mycorrhizal fungi. So now the mycorrhizal fungi increase in population as well as uh, the energy that they have to perform their functions which include the building of aggregates and storing carbon in those aggregates as stable soil organic matter or humus which ultimately leads to the liquid carbon pathway. So we wanna start the system off with the decomposition pathway, as well as nutrition. So these two things kind of combine into the same thing. Now this also uh, increases plant health. So the nutrition also increases plant health as we provide, you know, say either a foliar spray or 
uh, seed inoculants. We have a video on seed inoculants um, or treatments. Fantastic return on investment. But that nutrition will feed the plant, increase its ability to photosynthesize, which further stimulates this whole system. Now, I haven't quite touched on biochar, but biochar can be used in this system here as well, in the, in the uh, decomposition or supplying nutrition to our plants. One way that we've uh, seen that's quite effective is the biochar as a delivery mechanism to the soil. So for example, you can inoculate your biochar with microbes as well as nutrition. So say you add your molasses or the minerals required for photosynthesis, so uh, magnesium, nitrogen, iron, uh, manganese, phosphorus, all of that to your biochar, as well as our worm castings, which contain a whole range of different uh, beneficial microbes. You supply this to the biochar and then you apply it to your paddocks. So you will never build soil organic carbon specifically with uh, biochar in any meaningful amounts, but it can be used quite efficiently to store, say, nitrogen so it doesn't volatilize off or leach away. And in that sense, it can be used as a really effective nutrition and uh, biology deliverance mechanism. Now I've seen a few liquid biochar um, products, which are probably a bit more of a, a suspended particle of biochar, where it's uh, you probably need a good agitator for it. But anyways, adding that or a really good replacement is uh, humic acid. You can get that from our website, or if you're a client of ours, you can get that through us. So some of the uh, humic substances, I would tend towards for a soil primer, a uh, humic acid because it's a bit larger molecule. You can sit more on the soil surface or in, in the uh, topsoil rather than being leached away some, to some extent. Uh, fulvic acid does, but fulvic acid is really good at stimulating bacteria. So a combination of each of those, we have a product which is, or we recommend a product, uh, it's 50-50 it's fulvic and humic acid. Uh, really good at stimulating both bacteria and fungi population. Now, in terms of comparison between each of the pathways, really we want to be focusing on building soil organic carbon with a liquid carbon pathway. It's the most efficient. We can do it on scale with a cover crop or even within our own crops, given that we have these other things. So this builds soil organic carbon. Say if we want to reap all those benefits, such as increasing water holding capacity, uh, increasing our CAC to some extent, increasing aggregation, all of that can be done focusing on liquid carbon pathway. If we want to say increase our uh, biology rapidly, we want to, uh, and as well as say uh, cycle nutrients, we want to focus on the decomposition pathway. Maybe we use the biochar as a nutrient and biology deliverance pathway rather than a soil and carbon building pathway. Now, one final thing uh, to mention is the bacteria to fungi ratio. Now, some people swear by it. Um, I think what's more important is getting both bacteria and fungi populations way up um, before focusing on the uh, ratio between them. And so sometimes in very degraded soils, you might be able to have a high fungi, pop a high or the correct fungi to bacteria ratio only because your soil is just deficient in bacteria. So the fungi to bacteria ratio doesn't quite tell us whether or not we have a active soil or not, or the numbers or diversity um, of bacteria or fungi. And so we focus on just increase our bacteria count first because regardless of your soil, if you've been conventionally treating it for a while, you're gonna have low bacteria or just biology in general. So we try and focus on bacteria. Bacteria is gonna feed our plants and then through that, we're gonna increase our fungi populations. As the end goal of all of that, to increase the fungi to bacteria ratio to the ideal levels. Again, I hope that helps. Uh, make sure to check out the uh, whole series if, if you want to learn more about soil organic carbon. Otherwise, if you want to build soil organic carbon and you're a farmer in Australia, uh, come work with us. We can help you set this all up. We can work through nutrition plans and cover crop plans for you. Um, you head to our website to see the services we provide. Uh, awesome. Thanks again for watching. My name's Teal from AgriSol. Cheers.